What's going on ladies and gents? So today I want to talk to you about three different things. One is skill and how do you develop skill. Two is home safety and security, some things that I've seen over the weekend as I'm going around and viewing people's homes as I'm passing by. And three is prejudice and preconceived biases. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is skill. So how do we develop skill in anything in life? Well, first and foremost, we have to try. If we never try, then we're never going to develop any skill. And unfortunately, a lot of the time we end up talking ourselves out of even trying new things because our brain at a primitive unconscious level doesn't enjoy change. It knows that it's surviving the way that it is. So why would it try something new? Because something new is unknown and unknown could potentially mean death, which is the number one avoidance our unconscious primitive brain always wants us to have. So that's why we feel anxiety, worry, fear anytime we're going into something new. But If you never learn how to push past that, push through that, then you're never going to develop new skill and you're never going to grow as an individual and you're never going to have the life that you want. And so how do we develop skill? We develop skill by having good guidance or teaching, coaching, mentoring, and by doing the repetitions in order to develop said skills. So when we're learning something new, it's like walking through a forest for the first time. If you walk through a forest just once and then you walk out, that trail is going to get overgrown really easily. I mean, hell, the wind blows and all of a sudden you can't even see where you walked in and out of the forest at. That's the equivalent to doing something once or twice. Uh, That's the pathway being developed in the brain. Now, if you do something hundreds, thousands, 10,000 times is what they say you need in order to really solidify that neural connection in the brain, what you're doing is you're walking up and down that exact same trail 10,000 times. What's going to happen? You're going to beat the grass down. You're going to kill the grass. You're going to make a dirt path. You do it enough times. Eventually, you could take an ATV through there and then a car and then you pave it and then you have a super highway where major transportation routes are being run through. Same exact concept when it comes to the brain and learning a new skill. You have to have that good guidance to establish that foundation. And when you do the work required, the repetition, that's when you develop the skill. Because through that experience is where you're going to come across your own failures, intrinsic failures, extrinsic failures, things outside of your body that are causing you to struggle or, or to fail for some means. Maybe you're too short, too tall, too skinny, too fat, you know, too one way or another. And then maybe there's environmental factors that you have to adapt to, like when it's cold, when it's hot, when it's windy, when it's snowing, when it's raining, when it's nighttime, when it's daytime, etc. And the accumulation of all those different types of circumstances, extrinsic and intrinsic, that are within you, That's going to mold you into being truly proficient and developing the skill required in order to be a master at it, you know, in order to perfect it, which there technically is no such thing as perfection, but perfection is the realization of your ability to perform said skill highly proficiently and always being open-minded and open-hearted and seeking improvement in every other possible facet and area of said skill. So make sure you have a good mentor and make sure you do the reps that they tell you to do what makes a good mentor experience i mean experience and the ability to orate and articulate that information over to you so anytime you are about to learn something from someone ask are they doing the thing that you want them to do if they are not doing the thing or living the life that you want to do or that you want to live then you shouldn't be taking advice from them i'm a huge believer in this. I'm not going to go to a kindergartner who's never lived life and ask them about life advice. Like they haven't done anything. I'm not going to go to a young adult unless they've been through some stuff that I could benefit and extrapolate some sort of information from and then apply it into my life. So make sure that you're asking yourself, what's this person's experience? Now, how many people have they taught? There's a difference between teaching and experience. You could be an experienced teacher, but Are you a teacher that is experienced in the discipline that you're teaching? Like when you go to Harvard Business School, people are teaching business and they've never run a multi-million dollar company in their life. They're broke. That doesn't make any sense to me. So always challenge the teacher. Ask yourself who they are, where they're coming from, what their experience is. And I don't mean challenges in like, you know, well, what about this? You're in person. I'm just saying ask yourself these questions prior to signing up for their class or working with them or watch their content and actually like determine yourself. Like, hey, is this somebody I could trust that they know what they're doing?
Then when they give you the skills to develop, you need to do the repetition or to develop that skill, the practice, the actual roadmap and the blueprint. You need to do that practice because there is no shortcut around that, ladies and gents. People always want to be talented, but you don't even know if you're talented at something until you've already done 99.9% of the work. That's when talent begins to come in. And it's like, man, you just have that extra edge. Well, if you keep practicing, maybe you have that extra edge yourself. Now, moving on to like the next topic of like home safety and security, I just want to say this is that if you never practice home safety and security, you're never going to be good at it. And I can't believe I thought everybody at least had a ring doorbell or some sort of home security system. And as I'm going through uh, the neighborhoods over the weekend riding this bike, I'm looking at people's homes and only like 12 percent had some sort of home security system in place. Now, why in this modern day and age, we don't at least have some sort of like a ring doorbell or singular camera, something, excuse me, something to just show that there's some sort of security system in place here is beyond me. On top of that, you don't even need to purchase any of these, you know, expensive hundreds of dollars worth of cameras. Uh, types of systems. There are a lot of things out there, which we talk about in Lethal U, Lethal University, where it's just like battery operated. And it's like window opener alarms and door alarms and motion alarms, things that you, it's like five bucks and you could place them around your home and keep your home safe and your loved ones safe. And then when your kids go off to college, they could bring this into college with them and keep themselves safe. So have some sort of home safety and security system. Here's a couple of things that I was just going through. This isn't necessarily what I saw because I was I was not seeing anything. But here's a couple of other things that I just want you all to be able to think about when it comes to uh, your home safety and security. So one of the first things is bubble wrap. If you have a window that's like a basement window and you don't want people necessarily looking in there and you're not looking out of it, if you put bubble wrap on the inside, it's going to greatly distort the image and people will not be able to see inside of it or some sort of reflective film, even if, especially if you live in like a hot area, reflective window film can actually reduce your energy costs. And so I highly recommend that you use it. A lot of corporations use it on their high rise buildings. Another thing is for your electronics or your highly valuable items, etch in them some sort of engraving ID number, something along that line. So if your stuff is ever stolen, then you're going to easily be able to reacquire it. And honestly, if I'm a criminal and I see that this thing has like some big marking in it, I'm probably not going to want to take it anyways. I'm going to try to scrape off all the stickers that I possibly can. And then if I see something is like sketched in there or etched in there, it's going to cause, it's going to be much more difficult for me to sell that item. So at least in that case, they're not getting to reap the benefit off of your stolen item. Now, lastly, what I wanted to talk to you all about today was prejudice. If you listen to the news and if you fall victim to the narrative that the news is telling you, well, my friend, you have weak mental resiliency and you need to really work on that. If it bleeds, it reads. That's a real thing because what's the brain's number one priority? Not get killed. But what does all the news and information propagation have to do with? Death, destruction, social economic collapse, World War III, all this bullshit. And what it's designed to do is to raise your sympathetic nervous system, your fear fight based response, your survival instinct so that you stay glued to it and attended, attending to it. And ultimately, they get paid off of your attention. But what happens, unfortunately, is that we begin to develop a lot of biases. Our computer search algorithms, I'll never forget this. I wish I would have recorded it. One of my young dudes, he was a young black guy, and I'm a little bit older of a white dude, totally different backgrounds, and we're working together on a job. And I told him, I was like, I want you to Google Donald Trump. And I Googled Donald Trump. And we both looked at our phones and completely different search results based off of our socioeconomic status. So like his was all about you know, how Donald Trump is screwed up and messed up and a criminal. And mine was all about how Donald Trump is you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread. And neither of us believed any of those things, but because I was an older white male with probably more Republican or conservative values, because he was a young black male coming from a predominantly Democrat or you know, liberal-esque type of a neighborhood, it automatically associated our search algorithms with that information. And so you're being manipulated constantly. Every single time you look at a screen all day long, every time you hear something over the radio, you're being manipulated into believing a narrative that somebody wants to benefit off of. And so when it comes to things like somebody's skin color, somebody's religious preference, look, this is America, man. Like we're supposed to be super accepting of everybody 
I, I can care less if you want to be gay or straight or bi. Honestly, I could even care less if you want to be a tranny. I just think it's fucked up that we're starting to push all this stuff off on our kids. That's where I start to really draw the line because kids do not have the ability to understand those lifelong, you know, reper- you can't even pierce your ears until you're 18 years old. And now we're like letting kids go to drag shows and chop off their nuts when they're like 13. That's insane to me. And they all end up killing themselves because they're super depressed and mentally disturbed. And I know this from personal experience. I've known like 15 trannies in my entire life and a lot of them ended up killing themselves and the rest probably still addicted to drugs and drinking and depressed they just never were able to find out who they were because they didn't accept who they were which goes back to the skill based thing where you need to just accept where you are in all things in life so if you want to develop good skills expect to suck and you'll be fine you just need to know exactly where you're at but just like anything else in life accept where you're at and then start to work towards that worthy ideal, that goal that you have. But I digress to a guy started making comments to me about like how it's so messed up. Muslims are praying in schools. I could care less. Good. I want them to be able to pray in schools. I want everybody to be able to express themselves as long as it doesn't cause harm or some sort of manipulation to those around them. Pursue happiness, my friends. And don't get wrapped up in this agenda, this PSYOP, this information warfare campaign that's being run against the American people where it's causing us to be more and more divisive against ourselves internally. If you find yourself getting emotionally hijacked over an issue, and by emotionally hijacked I mean upset, pissed off, frustrated, thinking about it later that day, then you need to take a serious step back and ask yourself, man, do I have a real a mental and emotional resiliency? Because the answer is probably no. And if you want to know how to build things like mental and emotional resiliency, then we're launching a school platform. It's totally free now. It's a community you could join. You could join Lethal U. There's plenty of other programs out there that you could even join that will help you build mental, emotional, even physical resiliency. And it'll allow you to make educated choices with the right types of information that are not readily available to you and me. So lose the prejudice, lose the bias, guys. Uh, Let's just love one another. And the way that we love one another is through action. Love is a verb. And the best way that you could ever show your love and appreciation and support for somebody is by standing up for them anytime they're ever being picked on or taken advantage of or victimized. Always do what's right. Learn how to stand up for good. And you do that by becoming lethal. Mindset, discipline, skill sets, and habits, guys. All right, everyone, that's it for this week. Remember, skill sets, you're going to suck at the start. Just accept it and be fine with it and have fun with your progression and then measure how the metrics develop and you perform more. That's more of an empowerment topic. Uh, have home security devices, like really basic stuff. And if you need advice on cheaper options, that's what Lethal You and, and myself are here for. And then ultimately... You know, lose the prejudice, lose the bias. Don't become a victim to this massive media hate wave propaganda that they got going on, which is all just designed to uh, tear us all apart. Because most people are good people. And when you can lose the fear of being attacked by everybody because you know how to defend yourself, you really start to see that. All right, everybody. Take care.